Hello everyone, welcome back. I got some really good ones for you today, but first I hope you've been having an awesome week so far. Happy Thursday on this November 17th, 2022. A lot been going on since my last video, so let's dive right into it, shall we? Markets, the three major US stock indices all pulled back modestly today, nothing crazy. Right at the open, we saw a jump in the 10 year yield in the bond market. That kind of spooked risk assets like the NASDAQ oil, precious metals, crypto, kind of seeing that mechanism at play where bond yields move higher, risk assets in this environment get kind of freaked out by that and they begin to tumble. All of this, I believe, prompted by Fed President James Bullard's comments this morning talking about wanting a terminal Fed funds rate more or less in the 5 to 7% range as opposed to a terminal Fed funds rate of like 45 to 5.5% that ultimately I think markets were anticipating. So Fed President Bullard comes out, kind of nudges those interest rate expectations a little bit higher, and that's what puts downward pressure on risk assets and upward pressure on interest rates and yields. So you're kind of seeing that, but again, nothing too crazy. As far as crypto is concerned, Bitcoin hanging out around 16,000. I would have thought Bitcoin would have held above 17,500, but we have this whole FTX debacle. Talked about FTX in the last video. However, that was about a week ago and that story was really just breaking like within a matter of hours. So, you know, I called it relatively correctly in that I, you know, assumed they were an exchange that was over leveraged and got liquidated. Kind of what we're looking at looks like FTX had about 900 million in cash and 9 billion in liabilities. So on about 10 to one leverage, the entire exchange imploded. This is a large exchange, major crypto exchanges being Binance, Coinbase, Gemini, FTX was, you know, as of a few weeks ago. So these really big exchanges that are essentially custodians for investors crypto, one of them just imploded a big one, a flagship exchange, created like a $10 billion black hole in the crypto space. And it's just kind of messing up the entire crypto market. So FTX imploded, people who, had their coins stored on that exchange are unable to move those coins get them off the exchange and they're probably just stuck there indefinitely and they're never going to see their money again coinbase is another example of a custodian all right that's the one i'm most familiar with so i i have a little bit of experience with coinbase and i also have experience with the non-custodial wallet option which i do recommend if you're interested take a look at MetaMask being the one I use. There's a lot of different ways to trade and store crypto. You can do the easiest route, which is just sign up for one of these exchanges like Coinbase or Binance or Gemini or a few weeks ago, you could have done FTX and you could hold trade cryptos on their exchange or you could download a MetaMask wallet and that's a non-custodial wallet. So they're there is no middleman kind of looking over your coins or in FTX's case, taking your coins and then trading with them. We'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. So you could go the non-custodial route with uh, MetaMask. There are some other options too for non-custodial wallets for storing your cryptos. And you could also look at like cold storage. So people who have their cryptos in MetaMask don't really have anything to worry about except for the you know, the price action we're seeing in cryptos because of this, but I'm still able to move my cryptos and money around. I'd say most participants in the crypto space are. It's just the, obviously those people attached to either FTX or Alameda Research, which was FTX's prop trading desk. They were also uh, using to like basically trade depositors money and speculate. SBF, Sam Bankman Freed, that's the dude that was running FTX. Um, I'd say he's pretty jammed up right now. And then his CEO of Alameda Research, she's pretty jammed up right now. SBF is 30. The CEO of Alameda is like 28. So, so some uh, young bucks pushing bees, 
learning some hard lessons, but everybody else is paying for it. You know, it's kind of ironic because a lot of people get involved in the crypto space to avoid gnarly, shady behavior that banks engage in. So they might go to crypto as an alternative to escape the scammy conventional banking sphere. But in this case, they took their money, left the scammy conventional banking sphere, ran over to uh, FTX, gave all their money to SBF, and then he traded with it on 10 to 1 leverage and blew his account up. So he blew your account up. Oops. Poof. We'll see if there's any arrests. See if this gets criminal. Maybe will, maybe won't. We're just going to kind of have to see. He's down in the Bahamas right now, probably, uh, I don't know, freaking out, losing some sleep. I would think, maybe not. Some of these people are, you know, who knows. Moving on, we did see geopolitical tensions rise in the last 48 hours. Apparently, a missile that was fired by Ukraine and designed to either shoot down another Russian missile or shoot down a Russian plane. Well, that missile kept going and went over into Poland, and so Ukraine accidentally fired a missile into Poland. It killed a couple people. You know, people started saying, oh my gosh, this is Russia attacking Poland. Ukraine's government on a hair trigger was pretty quick to uh, try to blame Russia and get, you know, NATO and, um, you know, the U.S. more involved in the fight against Russia. But it looks like it was just kind of an accident. Um, the fog of war is real. The first reports are often, you know, kind of kind of full of holes, kind of Swiss cheese on those first reports you always get, especially from a war zone. So a lot of people jumped the gun and thought Russia was maybe, you know, launching a full scale assault on NATO. Looks not to be the case, but kind of freaky. I would say, yeah, that's, that's really all about it for right now. Pretty boring day in markets, but we do have the FTX fiasco. We do have these Fed presidents, you know, coming out one day being dovish, coming out another day being hawkish. I'll kind of explain the way that that game works. So you have five Fed presidents today, James Bullard, the Fed president of St. Louis, coming out and acting hawkish. But you have five of these guys, and they just kind of play off each other. Maybe now that James Bullard has come out, like, very hawkish, we'll have another Fed president come out and kind of soften that down with some dovish rhetoric, maybe say, Oh, well, even though James Bullard says interest rates need to go to 5 to 7%, I'm thinking maybe 35 to 4.5%. You see how they can kind of start managing market expectations and kind of playing off of each other. So you have five Fed presidents that they like to float out for that. Janet Yellen, the uh, Secretary of Treasury, they like to float out for that. So Janet Yellen, she'll come out and kind of set expectations. Um, obviously, Jerome Powell, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, will come out pretty often manage expectations uh, and then as far as those five fed presidents are concerned you also have on the fomc another seven board of governor members and so that seven members of the board of governors for the federal reserve and then the five fed presidents they come together that's 12 people that makes up the federal open market committee they ultimately decide interest rate policy kind of set the tone for the debt market and then every other market ultimately being a derivative of the debt market kind of trades off that. All the way out to the end of the risk curve, even like Squishmallows and Pokemon cards way out there, you know, trading on ultimately Fed policy as the headwaters. So, yeah, that's your FOMC. Fed Bullard came out today kind of managing expectations. We'll see, you know, if the next person comes out hawkish or dovish and markets kind of react accordingly. And that's really all I got for right now. Kind of a quick video, but I'll be back as things progress. Uh, so, yeah, Fed playing games with the markets and managing expectations. SBF and his FTX exchange imploding, still feeling the reverberations of that. And that's really about it for right now.